That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. That's what she said. Well, that's what she said. Welcome to That's What She Said, conversations with interesting people from the world of sports, music, comedy, and more, talking about their lives, careers, successes, and failures. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a special bonus That's What She Said podcast with two of the world's best soccer players, Kristen Press and Tobin Heath. Got the chance to chat with them for about 20 minutes, talked about their involvement in a very cool mentorship program, the company that they started with Megan Rapino and Megan Klingenberg, the sort of challenges and excitements of entrepreneurship. Also, women having to bet on themselves. Uh, and, of course, we do the Spanish Inquisition. Hope you enjoy. That's what she said. So excited to be joined by Portland Thorns FC and U.S. Women's National Team player Tobin Heath and Utah Royals FC and U.S. Women's National Team player Kristen Press. They're both involved with the 2020 Stacy's Rise Project, a four-month program for female entrepreneurs that gives out $10,000 grants, professional advertising services, and executive mentorship, including mentorship from these badass ladies. Uh, I'm jealous already of the women who've been selected for this. Let's talk about how you guys got involved. Tobin, uh, what was sort of the impetus to, to join the Stacy's Rise Project? When Stacy's first approached us about the Rise Project, there were so many synergies between um, what they're trying to do with their female entrepreneurs and then with what we're doing with Reink, our company, as female entrepreneurs. Um, it's all about mentorship, giving back, helping out, thought partnership, um, all things that have been crucial for the success of our company in its short uh, lifespan so far, um, but things that we know that are valuable um, in the sports world, um, which is this commitment to uh, give back and give forward. Yeah, Kristen, it feels like you guys are probably approached with any number of things to get involved in. What was it about this that separated it from the pack? Yeah, I think that the Stacy's Rise project is really special in that um, it's really coming at the issue of um, an equal opportunity in business for women at several different angles. And I think that resonated with myself and my personal journey, you know, playing for the national team and being a public figure, but also in our off-field fight for, for pay equity. Um, and then in starting the business, both, you know, coming at social issues by breaking down the structures that are limiting certain groups of people, but also you can't just bring those down. You also have to build. You have right. to build new anti-racist, uh, gender-free, limitless, um, label-free structures um, so that all people can thrive. And and we do that, um, and we created Reink because of that, a new pie where we could bet on our own value. And we're super lucky uh, because of our sports mm -hmm. background that we have access to amazing mentors, an amazing team, um, world-class people. But that's not the case for all female entrepreneurs, and it's actually quite tough in business to find other females to um, to learn from and to share and to grow. And and within Reink, the the women leaders that have helped guide me have been vital to my success and, and our success as a business and also the young people that we've brought on these young women sometimes college age and, and just out of college that I've had the privilege of mentoring has been the most rewarding part of, of this business and so to be able to extend that mentorship program beyond Reink and to start to talk to other um, CEOs and, and founders, female founders, is, is going to be amazing. And um, al along with the financial boost that, that women need in order to succeed and in order to have you know, a fair shot in, in a very competitive business world. Yeah, you mentioned sort of betting on yourself, and that's the through line for the U.S. women's national team for years. Like listening to Julie Foudy and the 99ers talk about how they pushed and pushed to get these big stadiums, and then, you know, they're stuck in traffic on the way to the World Cup games and realize that the traffic is for them. It's like this revelatory moment of the betting on themselves and having it work. Tobin, I wonder if you think that there's this sort of inherent part of being an athlete and being part of a team and learning how to work with different people, learning how to rise up together and, and raise up others that makes um, maybe it easier for, for someone like you and, and Kristen and Megan Rapino, Megan Klingenberger, your, um, your uh, partners in Reink, um, and, and whether that's something you feel you can offer to maybe female entrepreneurs that don't have that built-in idea of sort of group efforts like a team. 
Yeah, I think um, just existing in these spaces is is creating change. I'm sure you know within um, your own field by just existing, you're doing something um, that nobody's ever done before, and you're allowing other people to see that and to know that it's possible for themselves. And I think for for Reink and existing in this new space is is for us to do that. We're four female founders. And we're just by existing, we know that we're creating change. And I think that's the same on the soccer field. I mean, when I first started playing soccer, being a professional women's soccer player didn't exist. There, there was no path to that. So for, for Kristen and I, we obviously had dreams to be these things that didn't even exist yet. And, that, and now, you know, you have people being born into a world where professional women's soccer players exist. And for me, that's so powerful to be able to see that. Um, it creates dreams. It creates opportunities. I always said um, that if you invest in women, there's a huge opportunity there. Um, it's an area that has been underinvested in, in for so long. Um, I think it's more of a cultural issue as opposed to an issue where you're not going to get an extreme return on investment. Um, we see with the U.S. Women's National Team just a staggering amount of revenue of, you know, people that are fighting over, over rights to, to the U.S. Women's National Team because there is such an opportunity there. And we've almost had to, you know, like you were saying, with Julie Faldi and those people, you know, carry that torch of believing that before it's ever been. You know, we're very much pioneers in something that hasn't existed. But it is that betting on ourselves but now through the history, it's almost like, you know, data is so powerful. Mm -hmm. Data proves now at this point that there is a lot of opportunity there um, that hasn't yet, that is ripe for, for the taking. And, you know, instead of uh, for us telling other people like, oh, invest in us, invest in us, you know, by creating Reink, we're, we're like, let's invest in ourselves. Let's, yeah. let's create, you know, nobody else is going to do it. Let's do it for ourselves. And I think there's there's a lot of power in that and, and, and taking that type of opportunity and step. So let's talk about Reink, uh, Kristen. You started this with Megan Rapino and Megan Klingenberg, and everything's sold out all the time. So congrats, I guess, or maybe produce more so that some of us can get it. Um, I'm sure you're learning from the beginning of this sort of company some lessons that you'll be able to share with these other female entrepreneurs. Um, why is it different and what sets it apart if someone said, okay, lots of athletes have, you know, clothing lines? What makes Reink different? Well, we're definitely not just a clothing line. Um, we started with the mission to boldly reimagine the status quo, which is so broad because there's so much in the world that we want to reimagine. Um, so we wanted to leave ourselves open to the possibilities <laughs> of reimagining so many different things and, right. and having, a, that. having a business that um, you know long outlasts our playing careers. I think that's like the, the foundation of it. We're not a merch company that's really tying to our individual brands. Uh, we're a business, and the four of us run the business. We are the board. We make the decisions. Um, and in that, the, the actual attachment that we have to what we're creating is, I think, what people love about it. There, it, it's very clear when you're buying a t-shirt that like it means too much to us <laughs> just a t-shirt but it means so much to us because if you actually build a t-shirt from the beginning yourself it's so hard and if you do it right and if you use or you know sustainable materials and if you care about who's manufacturing it what's their story are they diverse the number of decisions that went into like making this simple simple t-shirt like you would think I created some sort of masterpiece because it's so hard, but that's why we care. And we really feel that that's why our community cares um, because it really is a labor of love at every step of the way. Um, and I think what I've learned is that um, the structures that exist in business right now are, are so strong and they're so rooted in, you know, the way it is. And so in order to make, to me, like, every product should always be made sustainably. But I always get pushback. They're like, what's, what's sustainable? Right. Like, what does that even mean? And so it's like something that should be just like intuitively, everything should be this way. It's, 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 it can't be. You have to fight for it. You have to explore it. You have to dedicate and invest so much into just trying to understand better before you can even take any action. 
that I think the, the lesson that I've learned through it is that, you know, when you're meeting challenges, when, you know, the air is thin, then you're on you know, the right direction. You're towards the top of the mountain. And, um, and so in that, embracing the challenge and knowing that, okay, if you are trying to reimagine the status quo and everything that you do, it's going to be hard at every corner. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's something that I absolutely have learned in football as well. It's like, there's no such thing as perfection. There's all, honestly no such thing as success. It's just as soon as you're successful, that's the memory and, and there's the new goal. So um, that, that endless climb, I think, is, is something that, you know, I hope to share with the Stacey's Rise Up entrepreneurs. I hope to, to share that, like, those challenges mean that, you know, we're going in the right direction. There's so much wisdom in the idea of just for some reason making a t-shirt that values specific things and all the ways you have to educate yourself and understand before you can move forward is like everything the country is going through right now. Like the anti-racism, educate yourself first before you move forward, before you speak, before you act, before you hire, before you engage with your employees. Like the, the decision to care enough about something to educate yourself is the first step towards anything. And so many people want to skip all those steps. And that's what results in companies, you know, doing the wrong thing or people being, you know, fired for the wrong reasons, all that stuff. It's sort of fascinating. Um, the idea that following the status quo isn't an agenda but going against it is when for the people who are served by the status quo, that is absolutely their agenda. Keep everything the way it is because it is really benefiting me, a rich old white man. But anybody who's against that has an agenda and we have to shout them down. Um, it's something that comes up so often, no matter what you're talking about, but it's fascinating to keep your company broad enough to challenge the status quo anywhere you could find it. Uh, you will find it everywhere and it will be a challenge for you for sure. But uh, it's a bold, it's a bold effort. Um, Tobin, who's been uh, asking for the most gear? I'm going to say, well, Rapino works there, so not Rapino. I'm going to go Sue Bird, who's not even a teammate, and then uh, Abby Wambach. Um, yeah, we've, we've had quite the, the list of asks. And, and like <laughs> you said, honestly, our clothes sell out so fast that sometimes we don't even get them, which <laughs> just sounds insane. Um, but to Kristen's point, is like we're um, so invested in every single – process and every single thing we're trying to fight against in, in every uh, step of the way of it, like you, she said just making a t-shirt we're can consistently coming against the status quo of how things are done especially in industry that is so ingrained in stuff i mean we create gender fluid clothes we create clothes for everyone sizing doesn't exist for that like we we have to come up with sizing that exists that exists for everyone because yeah. for so long sizing has just been this is for a man and this is for a woman and and we we know no I mean sports women know the best that there's no idea there's no one idea of what a woman looks like right. or should look like personally and um, so fighting against those things over and over it, it's it's really funny so so we always say that like we we create these products and, and we don't even have them because we want other people to have them that it's more important for the message and the story for other people to have you know we're we're so fortunate because we get to build the message and build the story and like you said it's everything that we make it doesn't start with the product it starts with the purpose and the mission so yeah. even before we start a collection, we're storytelling on, on what the moment means, what the collection means, what we're trying to tell our community, what we're trying to tell the word. Um, we're just using these clothes as a symbol for so, something so much greater uh, that we're trying to, to share. And it's just kind of our starting point. You didn't name any names, though. So uh, I need at least one name of someone who's been bugging you for gear. Chris? <laughs> I feel like... Yeah, it would, it would probably be uh, like probably more Glennon than Abby. She's okay. Seen. That checks out. That checks out. Okay, she wants to be a part of uh, the soccer, so that checks out. Um, the membership part is a big part of Reink, and that to me feels like a mentorship for the people that get involved with it. So you're primed and ready for the mentorship aspect of this Stacy's Rise project. Kristen, what are you, what are you going to do if someone has a question for you and you don't know the answer, if you're supposed to be the mentor and you're still learning? Well, I never have the answer, um, <laughs> but, but I like that. I like being in that space where um, you can always have like a rookie mindset. And one of my partners, you know, non-soccer player, full-time re-anchor now, 
um, she said to me once, she was like, I'm just so shocked by like the four of you, how humble you are. And I was like, what? You're huge egos. Like, what? Um, but she meant like, because when we go, when we enter the business world, we're like, well, we have no idea what we're doing. And so anyone that's been in business for a day, anyone who's been in the workforce for a day has like more experience than us. Um, and, and so we have really brought that humility that's only possible with confidence of like not being embarrassed with, with, by what we don't know. And actually, I think that's like a really great thing to share. Um, and now, you know, when we look to, to hire people at Reink, we think about that. Like, we need people that are just able to, you know, be confident enough in themselves that they can actually put their egos aside. Um, and, and that's like kind of like a funny, cyclical thing. But I think that's something I would love to share. You know, like, it, you, in order to be a leader, you have to serve. So it's actually like from the bottom up. And I think that when you think of it that way, it, um, it really changes kind of the hierarchical sense of what a business is. Like, oh, you report to the CEO. Well, I'm a CEO and I, and I want to support you. And then if you feel respected and you feel valued, I believe that the output that you're going to give to the company is so much higher. And um, I think that flipping that model on its head allows the company to go so much further and and it's really powerful for a lot of people. Yeah, I can't tell you how many powerful women in particular I've interviewed that have said one of the keys to their success is being able to admit when they don't know something and to ask people, how do I do this? How do I learn this? How do I get better? Instead of presuming that they need to come across like they are in charge of everything and then actually making big mistakes because of that sort of false sense of, of knowing all. It's a useful lesson for maybe the guys who aren't as used to being willing to say that they, they don't know something or can't do something. Um, well, I'm excited for all the women that are going to get to work with you guys. Um, I think there's um, probably some early challenges in re-ink that you've learned from and that you'll be able to sort of bring to the table and explain to them how you, how you work through that. You've obviously been super busy with re-ink and with this. Are you keeping an eye on the challenge cup? Are you talking trash over text? What are we, what are we doing here in terms of, uh, you know, keeping an eye on your teammates and, and, and what's going on in Utah? Honestly, wishing them the best, sending love and support and doing whatever we can to, to make the team know that, you know, we're there in spirit and, and that we're pulling for them. Yeah, my, uh, my, uh. Red Stars are struggling, but they got a big W last night. So uh, we're, on the, we're on our way back. We're on our way back up. Uh, before I let you go, you guys have to do the one thing that everybody does and nobody expects. I didn't expect a kind of Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. It's the Spanish Inquisition with Tobin Heath and Kristen Press. Number one, Kristen, what's your Desert Island album? You can only have one. Songs in A minor. Love it. Love it. Tobin? Um, I, I don't know. No judgment. What's the first thing that came to your mind? Honestly, Bob Marley. All right, perfect. I've been listening to a lot of Bob Marley lately. I've been needing some calming relaxation vibes. Uh, number two, Kristen, what habit or quality do you think has contributed most to your success? My sense of humor. Open. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually joking there. I have no sense of humor. Um, <laughs> focus. I'm very okay. focused. Oh. That's honest. Tobin? Probably competitiveness. Mm, that's a good one. Uh, number three, Kristen, what would you consider your biggest failure? Um, I think the only things that I consider failures at this point are like relationships that I still need to mend. Okay. That's a good one. Tobin? Um, the first thing that popped up into my mind was um, I really wanted to win four Nash championships and I only won three. That is a great failure to have. There's that humility that you guys talked about really coming through. <laughs> uh, Krista, number four, have you ever been in a fist fight? No, no, no. I have very small hands. <laughs> <laughs> Tobin? I wanted to, yes, but no. Wanted to. Yeah, well, haven't we all? Uh, number five, Kristen, if you could switch lives with anyone for a day, who would it be? Ooh. And the, but that's, see, I just need to know to, for what goal. 
These are supposed whatever to be whatever you want. Right? Yeah, whatever. You, I mean, a lot of people say Beyonce, get a lot of Michelle Obama's, get some Barack. Yeah, I was going to say Barack, but then I was like, but what's he doing right now? Like, I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to like waste yeah. my, my switch. <laughs> maybe just, you know, jet skiing with Branson again. Who knows? Yeah. So maybe Barack. <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty good right now, actually. Tobin? Honestly, I would never want to switch with anyone. Um, For we one do day. Have what for one day? Okay, I would want to switch with one of our um, uh, co-founders. Her name's Jenny Wang, and I would love to go into her, her mind for just an hour. Yeah. Okay, that's a good one. She will be very intrigued by that answer, and she will wonder why you want to get inside her brain. I think she'll know. <laughs> uh, Tobin, number six. What's the most embarrassed you've ever been? Uh. I don't, I'm not a very embarrassed person. That's uh, good. Man, I have no idea. Well, I can't believe nothing from your adolescence just immediately sprung to mind that you no. have not forgotten. Oh, one for me did. I, in third grade, was asked by my teacher to clean up after some of my classmates, and I refused, and I like ran away and then I got what was equivalent it was called a yellow card which is basically <laughs> like you got suspended for a day and I was humiliated because I was very much a goody two-shoes and like straight A student and that was that was the pits for me <laughs> wow it's not bad for most embarrassed that's not bad Tobin's never been embarrassed so this is a goal now for everyone who knows her is to find <laughs> A way to embarrass her. Uh, <laughs> number seven, Tobin, what's the thing about yourself you'd most like to improve? Uh, compassion. Okay. Kristen? Patience. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm with you on that one. Uh, number eight, Tobin, if you could be commissioner of life for one day, what one rule would you enforce that everyone would have to abide by? Probably just kindness. It's a good one. That's a, that's a very common answer these days, unfortunately. I think it's top of mind for everyone. How about you, Kristen? Maybe um, each day having to just pause for a little bit of time and just like sit with yourself. But honestly, I need someone to enforce that so that I do it every day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Tobin, number nine, what's the most scared you've ever been? Um, the most scared I've ever been... Well, when I was in college, I was in a pretty scary car accident um, that was probably the closest I've personally come to death, so I, I guess that would count. But I was, like, kind of eerily chill during it, so. Yeah. But that's probably my response for most things. Yeah. Uh, being eerily chill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what about you, Kristen? Yeah, I... Honestly, I've never gone through anything really scary. So I was just like reflecting on what that means for my life. But yeah, um, then it came to mind that I was on a terrifying plane once through Ooh. a storm from the Philippines. That, and that was very scary. Yeah, I could see that. All right, last one. Number 10, Tobin, what three words would you most hope that people would use to describe you? Nice, kind, and fun okay Kristen joyous grounded and compassionate oh those are good those are good well it was fantastic to talk to you ladies good luck with Stacy's rise and uh can't wait to see you back out on the field sometime good luck with the re-ink and thanks for taking some time to talk to me thanks. thank you appreciate it that's what she said 